Welcome Pisces to your in-depth monthly forecast for June 2024 for the Ascendant, the Sun or the Moon. On the screen now I'm sharing your event chart right at the start of the month which gives us a lot of crucial information. First up, we need to be mindful of the planets in your sign. Now, Neptune, your ruler, is very close to the moon. This suggests that your imagination can be hugely vivid this month. Now, Saturn, in your sign since March the 7th, 2023, has been asking you to be really quite pragmatic over that period of time and to jettison the things that aren't really essential. But it's still important to embrace what makes you, you. And Pisces people have a particular appreciation of the ephemeral themes of life, not necessarily the things that are tangible. And also, the Moon and Neptune are forging a glorious link with your other ruler, your traditional ruler of Jupiter, newly arrived in your fourth house of home and family. If there is something that you want to set your intentions to, do use that imagination because it can be extremely potent in terms of guiding your success this month. But let's look at the aforementioned house four. Jupiter there for the first time in 12 years. Jupiter in Gemini, it's detrimented, but Jupiter, your ruler, is still through its rulership of Sagittarius, very much about growth, optimism, and critically good fortune. If you are wanting to move or improve your living accommodation, the next year does provide a wonderful window of opportunity. Jupiter here through to June the 9th, 2025. But Jupiter's aligning with Pluto at the start of this month in an incredibly powerful way. And Pluto is in house 12. Dig deep, Pisces. There may be parts of your existence that you're beginning to tap into. And this is a story that began for 11 weeks last year, but has taken on more energy since the 21st of January this year. Now, Pluto is going to reverse out of your 12th house of the deep subconscious at the start of September and back into Capricorn for one final visit in our lifetimes. But for now, Pluto is asking you to quarry down and perhaps embrace some of the, of the strands of life that many of us can find difficult, our fears, our shadow side, the parts of our nature that we don't quite understand, that can be a bit irrational, that perhaps can be re very reactive and not necessarily quite the version of ourselves that we'd like everyone to know about. So essentially what Pluto and its transformational energies, particularly in the retrograde as it is now, applying to your ruler Jupiter is doing, is asking you to dig deeper to find what would really help you to crystallize what would make more of your ideal emotional life. Because the fourth house where Jupiter is, along with Venus and the Sun, that's very much about where you live, how you live there and who with, in a practical sense. But the fourth house is our sleep point in all our natal charts. It's really where we need security, safety. It's about the environment that makes us feel safe. But it's also about our sensory energies. It's where we can really relax. For some people, the fourth house could be in a busy cityscape. For others, that could be the most appalling place to try and feel safe. We're all different, but I suspect as a Pisces, that you have a big appreciation of nature, of being near water, anywhere that's tranquil. And those are really going to be to the fore at the start of this month. But I want to assure you that as June goes on, it does get a lot more interactive and a lot more sociable. But I feel that what the angle between Pluto and Jupiter is asking you to do is really use the faith that Jupiter has through your sign but also its love of knowledge through Sagittarius to inform yourself through the conduit of Pluto's research and much more about what would really add to your sense of personal understanding, but also where you can increase your sense of emotional and physical security. But also at the start of this month, Mercury, the planet of communication, has just passed over the rather erratic energies of Uranus. 
Now that happened just at the end of May, but they're still pretty close together. You could feel full of energy as the month begins, almost too much nervous energy, but you can use this productively. You could have some fantastic ideas buzzing around your mind as uh, the month starts, but also we need to be mindful of Mars in your second solar house. That's pushing you to try to improve the foundations in your world and particularly financially. Mars in the second house can also have a great appetite for life's uh, goodies, but it's very close to Chiron. If you're someone who doesn't feel quite as intact as you would like to when it comes to your self-worth, Mars could see you try very, very hard to overcome that in a physical way, improving your finances. But it's important that you don't let Mars's bluster override how you're truly feeling. Because remember, this is a month when you can really look your vulnerabilities in the eye. So just be careful of that. And Mars can also be very much to do with pride. And it's also where we can sort of be very attached in the second house. Well, I've got this, I've got that. This is why I'm okay. And it can be a conversation we have with ourselves, not with others necessarily, but it could in some ways deflect you from the opportunity to open up a huge reservoir of insight. However, if you are wanting to focus in a practical way on where you live, the fact that Venus, the planet of love and beauty, peace, and of tranquility is so close to the sun, only one degree away at the start of this month, and very close to the sun through the first two weeks, suggest that if you have got uh, the resources to do so, you may want to redecorate. Also, if you're someone who has a big appreciation of your garden area, you could be very busy there. I know that can be true of many people at this time of year, but I think you could get particular enrichment this year because of Venus and Jupiter being in this area. But also, the Sun is just in the second decan of the sign of Gemini, which of course is an air sign and very much about communication, and therefore that evokes Venus as well. So very Venusian energy at the start of this month. So if you can get together with the people who are really important to you. Now for some people that can be blood relatives, for other people that's not the case. Really it's the people that you feel a meaningful connection with, that soul connection. And so some kind of gathering, it could be a reunion, it could just be getting together with people that you do see fairly frequently, but on this occasion, the connection can be so much more lovely. Not for any particular reason other than the fact that Jupiter and Venus are glowing up this uh, homely, emotional part of your situation. And if you are someone who loves catering for people, and Pisces people can often be absolutely brilliant cooks, then uh, you may lay on an absolutely fabulous uh, uh, spread and people could really enjoy uh, your uh, hosting skills at the start of this month for absolute sure. Now, if there is somebody that you're drawn to in a romantic way, what I feel that you're wanting to understand is, can this go from being flirty and fun and have that spark to something where you can feel at peace and at ease with them in a more psychological way? So that's another question that could come up at the start of this month then Mercury moves on the third. For south, it moves into one of its two home signs of Gemini. But for you, the fourth house could evoke a desire to use your home in some kind of productive way. Now, it could be that you work from home anyway. If you don't, or you're thinking about a part-time or a business or a, a more upscale enterprise, but you can work within your community or offer services, that could be very, very exciting, but just be aware that Mercury can, through to the 17th, see you at times circulating thoughts around your mind in a way which isn't necessarily so good because it may be more difficult to actually say, articulate Mercury, what you really feel. But there's enough other energies to counteract that to a degree. But then in, on the 6th, we have a new moon. 
If you are moving into a new home in the following month, your timing is impeccable. If you move on the 6th, well, you couldn't hit the jackpot any more than that. I can't promise that you'll live there forever, but I think that you'll make the most of this opportunity at this time and you'll want to really make it homely and very welcoming and it could finally provide you with the sanctuary that you've been seeking if this has been quite a long process. If you're already living somewhere that really meets your needs it could be those decorative or gardening changes that you're grappling with but the moon and the sun are very close to Venus. What does your home represent for you? Are you getting the most out of it? In some ways, what Venus asks a question of you here is, are you living at home alone, for example, and you don't actually have much social interaction? Is there a way you could change that a little bit that you felt comfortable with? Some people may even think, because Venus can be about money, of having a lodger, um, renting out that spare room, or perhaps thinking, uh, in other ways about how you can use your home to host things. So this could be something to do with your community, for example. Um, if you're a crafter or a maker, getting other people around and who share your passion for your hobby, that can be a lovely way to embrace this very Venusian new moon. Now, some of those outcomes may not suit you at all. You may want to keep the drawbridge up, so to speak, but I can assure you that your home can be a very important part of this month's story. But that starts to change on the 9th, because then Mars moves out of Aries and into Taurus. Mars in the third house is a very, very lively influence. Over the next six weeks, it's going to be much harder to sit still. I mentioned about family or extended family. The third house can be about siblings, but it can also be about neighbours. Is there going to be more connection? over that period of time, possibly, but also I think you're going to be more active. Mars won't see you sitting on your hands, and even if that home is the cocoon for you, you can still go out for a nice walk or run or cycle ride, third house very much to do with cycling, or if you're into skateboarding or roller uh, boarding or perhaps getting on the surfboard, anything which really gives you short bursts of exciting energy really speaks to Mars's transit through Taurus and it needs to feel good, it needs to feel earthy as well. But Mars clashes immediately with Pluto. If there is something in the background of your situation that's been bubbling away, maybe it's something you are conscious of, maybe it's something you're not, the third house and Mars could see someone say something to you, so like, like an incoming energy, but equally the planets can activate an outcoming, outgoing energy from you. So something that has been fizzing away deep within you that perhaps you've not been completely happy with, you could express it in a very, very uh, raw way, a very acerbic way. So the second week of this month sees Saturn in your sign challenge the cosy relationship between the Sun and Venus and then Mars be challenged by Pluto in your 12th house. So what we get in here is those two critical outer planet players, uh, Saturn, well Saturn's known as an interpersonal planet to be fair, but uh, Pluto, an outer planet, this is very much about transformation, Saturn's about your boundaries, and however much you want to bring to pass something that's very beautiful at the heart of your world, you may still need to keep a little bit of your guard up. But someone could surprise you by bringing up an issue that's quite, uh, quite old, maybe historic, maybe it's a grudge or a disappointment they had with you. Or you could hear from someone, you could get an unexpected text message or email, uh, and you can't quite understand what the person's angle is about, because they may be still festering on something that's many, many moons old. But equally, don't be surprised if your subconscious suddenly gets aroused and something you feel irritated about needs to find a, an outlet. But on the 14th to the 16th, there is a, a lovely link between Mercury and Venus, which can provide another shot of peaceful equilibrium. 
but then we really have the most exciting phase of this month. The 17th, Venus and Mercury move into your fifth house. Venus in the fifth house is fantastic. This is going to do wonders for your self-belief in terms of your personal appearance. Mercury moving here is much more playful, much more flirty and interactive, but they're followed by the Sun moving into the fifth house. The fifth house is where you can really uh, demonstrate all your talents and flair to your heart's uh, desire. And the last phase of this month, therefore, is much more outgoing. So although you have all these enriching possibilities earlier in the month to get in touch with how you feel about things, you may feel very sentimental about people from your past, very nostalgic, there may be those gatherings, but that dose of reality stabs in from the 5th to the 12th with Saturn squaring up the Sun and Venus. And then as Mars moves, you're going to have you know, you're going to share your opinion and someone won't like your opinion or someone will say something to you that you're not expecting. But then, as we have the summer solstice, the sun glides into Cancer, which of course, like your sign, is, an, is a water sign. And this really can help you really shine in the last 10 days of this month. There is a full moon on the 22nd in Capricorn. The moon's weakest uh, location in its journey. I feel that you could have some different choices, maybe uh, around a relationship. And because your ruler Neptune T squares that full moon at the end of this month, it's going to be important to get all the information. Remember, I said to you at the start of the month that your imagination can help you to visualize some really important things in a spiritual context to draw them into your life. You may get those things as this month draws to a close, but it may not be exactly that what you expected, or there could be an option. For example, there could be two people who show an interest in you, and you could feel a bit torn about who to go for. There may be one that really strikes with you the more uh, communicative way, shares interest, very easy to chat with. There may be someone else that that's not so easy, but the sexual chemistry is very strong. And then Saturn in your sign goes into a 20 week retrograde from the 29th, inverting seven degrees. And in that seven degrees through to the 15th of uh, November, I feel that you are going to perhaps have to go over some old ground that you thought you'd dealt with. It depends on where you have the sun ascendant or moon in your chart. If you are in the first half, of the first two decans really of the sign of Pisces, you've definitely been affected by Saturn since he moved into your sign on the 7th of March last year. But if you're in the latter part of the sign, the last 10 degrees, you might not quite feel Saturn in the same way, but the retrograde can still be very valuable for, for you too, but perhaps more psychologically. For the earlier born Pisces people, it's more about your energy and where you're applying your energy. Are you applying your energy to the things that are really meaningful? Or are you scattering your vitality on demands that actually give you no personal satisfaction, but most of all, don't help you to manifest the best version of your individuality? So that's something you can really consider as this month draws to a close. Have a wonderful June, Pisces. If you've yet to subscribe to my channel, please help it grow by doing so now. And if you would like to ascend above this zodiac forecast, if you give me three pieces of birth, of birth data, of time, date and place, or date and place if you don't know your time, I can produce for you your life roadmap report, which will give you searing insights into the patterns that have played out in your life so far, but a much more intimate understanding of how to work with those energies future forwards. But also my special package of 30% off, you can get your move-in transits and how they interact with your blueprint, your unique blueprint. If you know your tropical astrology, check out my draconic version. This is your soul, your karmic roots that you bring into this world. It's a real eye-opener. Please see below for more information on both.